Welcome to D's. Uh, we're going to be solving quadratic equations again today, but today's goal is I know how to use the quadratic, or I know how the quadratic formula was derived, and I can use it to solve any quadratic equation. Um, so we're going to derive a formula that works with anything. And I, when I say anything, I mean anything. Any quadratic equation. Remember when we graphed? Um, not everything graphed nicely, so not everything was good to graph with. Uh, when we solve by factoring, well, you know that there are some things that don't factor, so not everything can be factored. Well, this quadratic formula works for everything. It works for the ones that factor. It works for the ones that graph easily. Uh, we're going to derive it today. You know, you're not responsible for being able to reproduce this proof or this derivation. Uh, but you are supposed to see it and understand where the quadratic equation came, or quadratic formula came from. So um, we're going to start by solving this by completing the square. Because solving by completing the square is another valid method, because we've already actually done that. When you solved um, for x-intercepts in the last unit, you were solving uh, a quadratic equation by completing the square. So I'm just going to go through this example here. 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. I'm going to solve it by completing the square. So the first thing I'm going to do is put brackets around the first two terms, and I'm going to take the 3 out. And when I take the 3 out, I'm left with x squared minus 2x on the inside plus 2. And of course, we still have equals 0 on this side. I have the 3, if I jump down a couple of steps, I know this is going to be x minus 1 all squared because I have to take half of that. And then I have to square that 1 to get a plus 1, and then I have to subtract it again. Now I'm going to take that negative 1 out of the brackets by multiplying this 3 through um, just to that negative 1. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3, and then there's that plus 2 equals 0. And of course, that minus 3 and plus 2 go together to be minus 1. So this um, on the bottom equals 0. Now that it equals 0, I can go about trying to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And when I add 1 to both sides, I get 3x minus 1 squared equals 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 3, which means I get x minus 1 squared equals 1 third. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get x minus 1 equals plus or, or minus the square root of 1 third, which is messy, but it's still doable. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get just x on this side. And over here, I'm going to have a 1, then plus or minus the square root of 1 over 3. Now that's the exact answer. I can get an approximate answer by typing that into my calculator. And all you have to do is press in 1 plus the square root of 1 divided by 3, or 1 minus the square root of 1 divided by 3. And so our answer is 1.58 or 0 0.42. Now, you should uh, try punching that into your calculator and see if you get the same thing. But see, it's actually fairly easy to rearrange and get x by itself as long as you have the square completed. Then you just reverse order of operations and you go through it the same way we solved for the x-intercepts in the last unit. Um, we're going to do that if I repeat that process with the general form. And by the general form, I mean this thing here that uh, has no numbers in it. Um, if I repeat that process with the general form, then um, I'm going to come up with a general formula. Uh, so this is going to look kind of nasty, but bear with me. I'm going to put brackets around the first two terms, and I have to divide the a out. So when I divide the a out, I get a, and then I have an x squared, and when I divide b by a, I simply get b divided by a, and we need that x there. And I need a bracket plus c equals 0. I'm going to move that over to try and line up my equal signs. Uh, now I need to figure out what my squared bracket's going to be. So I'm going to jump down a couple of steps. And I have x squared. Now I, or sorry, x. And that's going to be squared. Now to figure out what goes in here, I have to take half of that. Well, taking half of a fraction is actually as simple as multiplying by a half, which is just multiplying the denominator by 2. So I get plus 
b over 2a. And just as a little aside, I'll just show you that here. Um, if I have b over a and I'm dividing it by 2, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. And when I multiply, I simply multiply the tops. b times 1 gives me b, and a times 2 gives me 2a. So it's b over 2a. So it's as simple as that. When I square a fraction, which is what I have to do, I have to square this thing to get what goes up here. When I square a fraction, I just square the top and square the bottom. So this is going to be plus b squared over 4a squared, and then I have to subtract that again, b squared over 4a squared. Now I need to get that b squared, negative b squared over 4a squared out of there, and to do that, I'm going to multiply by this a, and what I'll have left in the brackets is x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4a squared. But when I pull this out, I'm going to do a little aside again. I have to multiply a by b squared over 4a squared, which gives me a b squared over 4a squared. But this a on top cancels out with one of the a's on the bottom. So all I really have is b squared over 4a. So when it comes out of the brackets, it's going to be minus b squared over 4a, and of course we still have plus c equals 0. And I can't actually put those two things together. They're not like terms, so nothing goes together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that I'm, uh, I've got my square completed, I'm going to add this and subtract this from both sides. So it becomes b squared over 4a minus c on this side. And then I have to divide both sides by this coefficient. So I'm going to divide both sides by a, but remember dividing by a is the same as multiplying by 1 over a. So when I multiply this side over here by 1 over a, This denominator just gets another a, so it's going to be 4a squared, and then the c gets a denominator of a. Now I have to take the square root, and when I take the square root, this side is just going to be x plus b over 2a. And taking the square root of this side is plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Now we're getting close. Uh, the last thing I have to do um, to get x completely by itself is to subtract the b uh, over 2a from both sides. So I get x on this side and I get subtract b over 2a or minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Now this is still just a little rough and we have to have it in a nice neat little formula. So what I'm going to do is get a common denominator underneath this thing. I get a common denominator underneath that thing. I have, uh, I'm going to use 4a squared as a common denominator. This already has 4a squared. So since that already has 4a squared, the numerator remains b. This needs a 4 and it needs an a to have that common denominator, so I need to multiply both top and bottom by 4a in order to get a 4a squared on the bottom. So if I do that, what I'm going to have is minus 4ac, because I'm multiplying top and bottom by 4a. Two more steps and we're done. Um, this is a perfect square, and when I take the square root of a fraction, I can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So since I can take that square root, I'm going to do it. So negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root, uh, sorry, square root of b squared minus 4ac, and it's going to be all over 2a. Whoops, that doesn't look like a 2 all over 2a. 
And lastly, notice that they both have a common denominator. So I'm going to write that as one big fraction. The numerator will be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the formula that you need to know. Now, I'm going to give you uh, a little helpful hint in remembering this formula, and that is I'm going to give it a little tune for you. And if anybody can sing it to me in class tomorrow, uh, I'll give you a chocolate. So, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ace all divided by 2a. Negative b e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Negative b e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now try to get that out of your head. We're going to move on. I'm going to show you how to use it now because knowing it is one thing, using it is a completely different thing. So if ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then we have this formula that you need to memorize. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. When using the formula, you still need to have the equation in standard form. And by standard form, we mean that it has to have 0 on one side. So that's important. I'm going to highlight it here. Um, it has to have 0 on one side. So you have to do all of that rearranging the same way we did when we were solving by factoring. They all have to be rearranged to, for 0 on one side. Then the coefficient of x squared is a, the coefficient of x is b, and the constant term is c. So you plug the numbers in remembering the quadratic formula. So I'm going to do this once. Now here there's no coefficient in front of x squared, so we understand that there's a 1 there. So our a value is 1. Now with the b, we have a negative 5. So our b value equals negative 5. And our c value is the constant term. So c equals negative 2. So those are our a, b's, and c's that we plug into the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now I'm going to plug these in and follow order of operations. Now, b is negative 5. So if I plug negative 5 in for negative b, I've got double negatives, which means that this is going to be a positive. Plus or minus the square root of b is negative 5. So I put negative 5 in and square it. Minus 4 times a is 1, and c is negative 2. And it's all divided by 2 times, in this case, a is 1. So we just plug them all in. Now we have 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared is positive 25. This number is always going to be positive because whether it's positive or negative, you're squaring it. So the first number is always going to be positive under the square root. Now this next one, I have a negative and another negative. So those two negatives are going to make a positive, so I'm going to have a plus in there. And then 4 times 1 is 4 times 2 is 8. So it's going to be plus 8. Now be very careful. If I see mistakes, this is where they occur. People put a plus instead of a minus or vice versa. And of course, all divided by 2. Now that's going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of. And that's going to be 33 all divided by 2. And you can plug this into your calculator. If you are plugging this into your calculator, you need to take special care that the top is done, hit equals, before you put divided by 2. If you just type in this into your calculator, 5 plus, and you have to do it twice, once with a plus and once with a minus. If you just plug this into your calculator, 5 plus the square root of 33 divided by 2. The calculator knows order of operations and knows it has to do division before it does this addition. However, that's not what you really wanted it to do because you want 
it all divided by 2. So if you're plugging it into your calculator, you can solve that by using the brackets or just simply hitting equals after you type this in and then hitting divided by 2 to get the rest of it. And of course, you have to do that twice. You have to do 5 minus the square root of 33 divided by 2 to get both of your answers. And there's our actual answers once you plug those into the calculator. And that is actually it. Uh, if you have any problems punching stuff into the calculator, and I strongly suggest you try uh, punching this one into the calculator. If you have any problems, please um, ask me at the beginning of class tomorrow so that we can get that straightened out before you start in on the homework. Uh, and that's it for the quadratic formula.